The Fuji X-T3 was my pick for the best camera released in 2018. It's got legitimate photo and video chops that other cameras can't really even touch and definitely not at this price point. But my previous videos were me saying how this could potentially work for you as a content creation camera and why it might not work for you at the same time. However, today I'm throwing my objectivity out the window and I'm gonna to explain to you why you should absolutely go out right this moment well, not this moment, but, but after watching the video and go buy a Fuji X-T3. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Straight off the bat, the X-T3 is one of the highest value cameras on the market today. Seriously, there isn't anything out there that gives you 4K 60, fantastic autofocus, great colors, more codecs and recording options than you could shake a stick at, a video stick, that's weird. And it does that at less price than anything near it in its competition. It doesn't actually, it doesn't really have any competition. If you follow me on Twitter, which you absolutely should because we have a great time there, you'll know I recently sold a lot of my camera gear in an effort to simplify my out of studio camera setup. That's where this little gem comes in. This is my first time outright owning the X-T3 and this is my personal X-T3. Before I've had them on loan from B&H, but this one, that's me. And the time has come for me to lay out a whole host of reasons for you to buy this camera. Actually, you know what? Let's switch to the Fuji right now so we can, the rest of the video will be on the Fuji. Okay, now that we're on the Fuji, I do want to mention if you are here to get wowed by the photography aspects of this camera, sorry, you won't get that in this video. I'm strictly a video user. I mean, look at the XLR adapter, I mean. And on that note, First up, the video recording codecs and capabilities. The X-T3 has more video recording methods than almost anything else I've ever seen. You can pick the resolution, frame rate, and bit rate all the way from 4K60 DCI down to its lowest recording setting. Do you want 4K30, 100 megabits per second? It's got it. Do you want 4K 24 frames per second at 400 megabits per second? It's got it. Do you prefer H.264 or H.265? You can have both. Plus, like I just said, it can record an actual cinema DCI 4K and the more prevalent UHD. That just means 17 by nine or 16 by nine. In addition to a huge variety of resolutions and frame rates, you can even do 10 bit recording internal to the camera's dual SD card slot. Or if you want more color information, you can do 10 bit 422 out to an external recorder like the my ever favorite Ninja V. In all fairness, it is easy to get lost in all of these, but if you know specifically what you want, chances are you can absolutely find it here. That's cool and all, and I really like having options of how I want my video to look and what kind of information to have in it, but you know what's more important? That the image is in focus. Kind of important, right? And wow, I still really like the X-T3 has eye autofocus in video mode. Yeah, it's got the little box and it makes sure the most important part of the video stays in focus with its awesome phase detection autofocus system. I mean, that's one of the main reasons I bought this camera. When I'm here in my little office slash studio, I use all manual focus because the GH5 has a wonderful app that lets me control the camera from my gross green chair here and this iPad. These chairs are gross, by the way. But when I'm out filming myself, I don't wanna mess around with phone apps or manual focus on the lens. I need the camera to really run itself so I can just make the content the way that I want to make it. And the autofocus system on the Fuji is so darn good. But I mean, every autofocus system, including Canon's fabled dual pixel autofocus, will fail from time to time. I mean, things happen. But here's one of the best parts of the X-T3, especially if you are used to a Sony mirrorless camera. Most of these cameras don't have flip screens anymore. I mean, the GH5 does, thank goodness. And they all need to start having them. Please, Fuji, please start having them on your camera. So you'll probably have some kind of a monitor of sorts to check exposure, framing, focus. This is leading up to it, by the way. Sony will not let you have the information sent through HDMI when shooting in 4K. So you can't actually tell what your settings are using a monitor. You don't know if it's tracking your face or if your shutter speed is correct or anything. You just have to, you can see the image and then that's pretty much it. The X-T3 allows you to see all of the settings 
through HDMI out. Now you wouldn't want to record this if you're recording to that device, but if you are using a monitor, this is super important. Like right now, it'll show you if it's got your face or eye in focus. It'll show you the camera settings and everything. Like I'm monitoring my audio right now. I'm checking everything from right here with the monitor. I love I love this feature. Leading from there, if you find yourself in front of the camera but need to change something, wow, this is all flowing really, it's all flowing really well together today. The physical body of the X-T3 is one of my favorite camera bodies of all time. You have access to all of the exposure dials physically on top of the camera. You don't have to get up and walk behind the camera to do it, and that's so important. I hate when I have to mess with a setting on a camera in my studio and I have to get up mess with it, come sit down, see if it's right. You gotta do that over and over. So you'll see in your monitor if you are overexposed. So you can drop either the ISO from the top of the camera or the aperture from the ring around the lens. If you don't know me, I'm a huge proponent of intuitive systems and minus having a flip screen, this is the best way I've ever found to dial in the settings from in front of the camera. And once you've got those settings dialed in, the video quality is fantastic. Man, another, Another great segue, we're doing really well today. I need to start writing like this all of the time. But seriously, the image quality out of this camera is fantastic. And the main reason for that, in my opinion, are the Fujifilm simulations. There are a whole wide range of simulations that should, they don't exactly, but they should simulate recording what a film camera looks like. Now, I don't really aim for cinematic videos or content, so I'm not as concerned about that film look, but I think the Eterna profile looks fantastic straight out of the camera. It's one of my favorite picture profiles today. I mean, it's right up there with the a7III's PP1. Like, those are my two favorite recording modes ever. I wish Panasonic had something like that. It's phenomenal, and you just don't even have to touch it later. Longtime viewers know when I say video, I mean both image and audio quality. And like you can hear right now, the internal preamps in the X-T3 are pretty legitimate for a hybrid mirrorless camera. We have a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus that we got running through the camera, and I think the audio coming out of this thing is amazing. And you might not think that's important until you start producing video of any kind. Bad audio will kill content faster than anything else. Sure, having a good looking image is cool, but honestly, it's not required. Having good audio is the most important thing you can do. There are channels out there with just cell phone videos. Image quality is not that important. Seriously, let's, as an aside for a second, if you come to me on Twitter or in the comments below and you ask me what camera you should get, I want you to take whatever budget you have in mind and I want you to take half of it and put it towards lighting and audio. Once you've done that, then we can start talking camera bodies. Getting a higher end body doesn't do much if you can't light or get decent audio. Those two things are far more important. And speaking of the body, the last reason to get the X-T3 has to do with everything else except the body. First, the lenses. The kit lens that comes with it is one of the best kit lenses I've ever seen. It's made of metal, it looks great, and has all of the functionality of a high-end Fuji lens. And it comes in the kit. For those that are not camera savvy, generally the kit lens sucks. It's like one of the worst lenses in the system, but this one is really good. Also the 12 to 60 Lumix lens is awesome, and the 24 to 70 Nikon Z6 kit lens is also fantastic. But the rest of the lens lineup is also just as great. But what's really great about it is the lenses are good, but the prices are so important. As someone that's been dabbling in full frame cameras for the last year or so, Full frame lenses are priced outrageously expensive. I mean, there are a few notable exceptions, mainly from Tamron. I'm talking about $1,000 for the budget ones, let alone the ones that you actually want, and those are like $2,000 starting out. Fuji lenses are optically awesome, and they do have some constant 2.8 zooms that are in the $1,000 price range. Yes, that is expensive, but it's doable, and their prime lenses are small, they're high quality, and they are much, much cheaper than their full frame mirrorless equivalents. And I really like APS-C sensors. It, they just work really well. So not only does this system rock for lenses, but the battery grip is almost a must have accessory. Again, it's pricey, but you can get it in the kit with the camera to save some cash. It gives you two additional battery ports, but what I love is the grip has a DCI input. So you can power the camera from an external source like your wall. As someone that has a live show once a week, Using batteries is a big 
pain in the butt. And my GH5 has died in the middle of the show, even with its battery grip on. And that stinks. It's probably my fault for not having them fully charged all the time. But that's why external power is so good. And finally, before we sum up, the price. The X-T3 can be had for $1,300. Again, expensive, but you can get one of the most capable video cameras of the last year with 4K60 DCI, 10-bit internal with great autofocus, and an APS-C sensor for less than anything else the competition has. I mean, that's C200 levels of recording for one-sixth the price. There just isn't anything on the market that does this at any price that comes close to this. The closest is my other camera, actually my main camera, the GH5. But even it has a smaller sensor, worse autofocus, and doesn't have as useful of a battery grip. The battery grip's great, it makes it look super awesome, but it's not as good. 1500 word essay later. Yes, you should go get an X-T3. It reaches a level of price, functionality, and features that nothing else in the market even comes close to. It's not a perfect camera, it doesn't have flip screen, it doesn't have IBIS, but it might be one of the most perfect ones for making YouTube content, and I highly, highly recommend that you get one. Thanks for watching.